Good morning guys. This video will explain how to construct an ungrouped frequency distribution. Let's remember that a frequency distribution is the organization of raw data into a table form by using classes and frequencies. So if we look at this table, we have uh, about 30 numbers in here. To make sure that we put it in the right order, let's identify the range, like what is the minimum value and what is the maximum value. In Excel, to get the minimum, we just type equal sign. That's for any uh, formula in Excel. We start with the equal sign. And then min. Notice now I have all the min functions identified. Uh, what I want is the first one. So double click it. This will open the bracket and look at the function name. It's all in capital letters. I'm going to highlight the entire table and press enter. So the minimum value I have uh, is 12. I don't have to do it visually by inspecting every single value. Here I have only 30 values. But if I have like 100 or 1000, it's going to be a very difficult task to do. So relying on Excel is much faster. And then we do the same for the max. So the first function is the max, double click it. Sorry guys, you notice that I have a call, that's why my voice is not up to speed. And the maximum I have is 19. <clears throat> what we observe is that the range of the data values is very small, it's relatively small. So a frequency distribution in this case can be constructed by using single data values for each class. So we, don't, we can't have a full range in each class. Uh, we don't have too many values to start with. If we have it like this, so we call such a distribution as ungrouped frequency distribution. Why? Because I'm going to go from the minimum of 12 and to the maximum of 19. I'm going to teach you a trick now. To increment it by 1, I'm going to click here and then hold down the control button, I'm holding the control while I'm dragging. Notice the double plus sign now on the edge, on the corner of the cell, and I take it all the way down to 19. That's what I want. To count how many 12s I have in this table, what I need to do is to say count, remember, with an if condition. So I'm going to count if. You see this is number 4 or 5 down my list. Double click it. It's going to look at the entire table, followed by F4 to fix the table range when I copy down the formula so it does not change because this range is fixed. It does not change from cell to cell. And what is it that I'm counting? I'm counting the values 12. So I click on the 12, close the bracket, look at the function now, and enter. Having it this way allows me to drag to the entire table and to verify that, yes, I did capture every single value that I have in my table. All I need to do is to verify the total. So we come here, auto-sum, and then I double-click it. That's my mobile ringing, sorry. So double-click this. And notice I have 30 values. And yes, this is what I started with. All that is needed now is to convert this ungrouped frequency distribution into a table, into a column graph. Remember, this is ungrouped. Why is it ungrouped? Because in each class, in each class, I have a single value. Here I have 12, 13, 14. So I don't have a range of values in each class. Single value. Doing it this way will provide you with an ungrouped frequency distribution. So, in order to construct the graph, I'm going to highlight everything except the total. Do not include the total in your graph. So we go to the frequency polygon, which basically depicts a histogram. Remember, the relationship between the histogram and the frequency polygon is that in the frequency polygon, we choose the midpoint of the upper uh, edge of each rectangle in the histogram. So after we highlight the entire table, we go to Insert, and from here we choose the Scatter Graph, 
and choose the connected points with straight lines because this is what a frequency polygon is. If you look at the graph, notice it does not look professional at all. The x-axis starts at a value um, at zero and then we have a big gap between the zero and the 12, which is my starting point. Not to worry about this, what we do is right click on the graph and first move it to a separate sheet. Let's call it, this is the frequency frequency polygon for the miles per gallon example. The first thing I'm going to do is to remove the legend. I have no use for this one. The horizontal grid lines, click on any of these horizontal grid lines and delete. Now, we're going to right-click on any of the numbers. Look at the numbers here. Any number will do. Right-click on any of them and go to Format Axis. The minimum, instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at one number below the starting point. That was 12, so we're going to start at 11. I'll just say Close. Look at the graph now. It looks way more professional than it did before. Next is to add titles to my graph. Uh, what I need you to understand is that you can play with the titles, apply all kinds of nice features through these three tabs on top, the design, the layout, and the format. So let's go to the layout to add the titles, x-axis, horizontal, and title below axis. Here it's the miles per gallon. It's going to look small, not to worry, we'll fix it later. We'll do the same to the y-axis, so we go to the vertical, rotate it. And here, type in the frequency or the count or anything to indicate the number of values you have in each class interval. And let's make it larger. So, so frequency until you can read it nicely. Okay, fine. Remember, other people having access to your file should be able to identify and understand what is it that you're trying to do. We'll do the same to the numbers in here. We'll make them larger. I think size 14, no that's too much, and do the same here, make it size 14, okay. Next is to add a meaningful graph, so this is the frequency, frequency, of course I have spelling mistake, polygon for the MPG example. Okay, so now at least it's a representative graph. We know what it stands for. We know what the values, different values are. And keep in mind that the frequency polygon is basically the twin uh, depiction of the histogram.